In custom car audio, we are required to use what is called a crossover. A crossover limits the information or frequencies that are sent to a speaker. So as an example, we don't want our subwoofers playing high range frequencies and we don't want our tweeters trying to play bass. Now in a previous video, I talked about using crossovers for component speakers and you guys had some questions. It's one thing for me to explain the crossovers, but it's a totally different thing when you can actually see what's happening to the frequency response. So in this video, I'm going to be using this guy right here, the Audio Control DMRTA, and I'm actually going to show you guys what is happening to the frequency response as I adjust crossovers. So to start off, what is a crossover and why do we really need one anyway? Well, if you guys caught that previous video, as you know, we have different size speakers within our install and we want to limit the amount of information that's going to each speaker. As an example, this is a tweeter. We don't want to send bass to the tweeter because one, it would damage the tweeter and two, this speaker isn't designed to reproduce bass. This is a much larger speaker which is designed to reproduce bass, but we don't want the high frequencies coming out of this because it will do what is called beaming. So the whole fact that different speakers excel at playing different frequencies requires a crossover. So what a crossover does is we would connect these to the speaker outputs of an amplifier, the signal goes in, it gets divided up, and then sent to each of the respective speakers. Now there's different kinds of crossovers. There's a standalone crossover like these guys here. These are what are called passive crossovers. There can also be a crossover built into your amplifier. Now this amplifier is a little bit different, but sometimes you'll see where amplifiers will have dials on top of them and you can adjust the crossover there. This particular amplifier is the Audio Control D-6.1200. D stands for digital, which means I can connect this to a computer. It has a DSP built in. And with that DSP built in, I can completely adjust all of the crossovers for each of these speakers independently. Now, if we decide to remove the passive crossover, crossover from the system and we're going to rely on the amplifier or a digital signal processor upstream of the amplifier to control the crossover information, that's what's called a active crossover. So that's a brief explanation, but I think what's really going to help you guys understand what crossovers are really doing is if we can visualize it, and I'm going to be doing that with this test setup here. For my test setup, I of course have an amplifier, I just have my power connections, my normal connections, and you'll see that in order to get the signal that's going into the amplifier, the musical signal, I'm using this guy right here, the audio control DMRTA. So just to make this perfectly clear, I have the RCA wires connected to the output, from that and they are going into the amplifier. This is a brand new testing device from Audio Control. It's built so that you can perfectly tune your system. I'm gonna be showing you guys a couple examples in this video, but we're mainly gonna be using it to look at the RTA graph, which I'll explain in a second. So because we can create pink noise or sine wave frequencies with the DMRTA, I have an output coming out of that and going into the amplifier. I then have the outputs of the amplifier, so the speaker wires, which would normally be connected to the speakers. Right now, I'm connecting those back into the DMRTA. I just want to show you guys electrically what's going on as we make adjustments. Now, both the DMRTA and the amplifier have a USB connection that I'm currently connected into my computer so we can adjust the amplifier, but so that we can also see on this software here, which is attached to the DMRTA, we can also see what is coming out of the amplifier. All right, so I've got the amplifier booted up now. It's currently playing pink noise on the DMRTA into the amplifier and we're measuring that output. So here in the DMRTA software, if you're not familiar with what pink noise is, pink noise is equal energy per octave. If you're curious what pink noise sounds like, let's give you guys a listen. So it kind of sounds in a way like static, but on the RTA graph here, this is what we should expect to see. We should see a level line going across. On the Y axis here, we have the level, and then on the X axis going across, we have the different frequencies. So down here, starting at 25 Hertz, that's your base range frequencies. That's like where the subwoofer would play. And then all the way up to 20,000 Hertz, 20 K, which is where the tweeter would be playing. So right now on the amplifier that we're measuring out of, I'm running what's called an all pass crossover, which means we're letting everything go past. Let's introduce a high pass crossover. I've switched software. This is the software that you actually tune the amplifier with. So I have my crossover here. I'm gonna go in and see right here where it's currently 25 Hertz. I'm gonna make this a high pass crossover starting at 500 
hertz, if I hit enter there, you can see that we now allow the information higher than that to go past, so that's why it's called a high pass crossover. Let's go back over to our DMRTA software. So now we have our crossover of 500 hertz applied, and you can see what it's doing is it's limiting the information below 500 hertz. Now you may notice that it actually starts dropping off above 500 hertz. This is the expected behavior for this type of crossover. The next interesting thing to notice here is the slope of the crossover. Here's one setting here. What I'm gonna do on the DMRTA is I'm going to store this into the memory. Now that that's stored, I'm going to go and make a change. We'll change the slope, come back into our DMRTA software. I'm going to recall that previous measurement. And here you can see how we've changed the slope of that crossover. So by changing that slope, we change how fast or how slow that frequency response rolls off. So again, this is a high pass crossover. It allows everything above a certain value to go past. This is something that we would use for a tweeter. Now, what if we have a subwoofer? We want all of our response to just be on this end in the base range of frequencies. So we're going to get rid of this high pass crossover and introduce what's called a low pass crossover. So I made those settings to the DSP inside of this amplifier. And here you can see what that looks like on our RTA graph. This is a low pass crossover. We're only allowing information lower than a certain value to go past. The final type of crossover here is what's called a band pass crossover. A band pass crossover is a combination of a high pass and low pass. And this would be used on something like a midwoofer where we don't want to send subwoofer range frequencies because it would distort the midwoofer. But we also don't want to send tweeter frequencies because it's going to start causing beaming. More about what beaming is up in the corner of the screen. So I've given you guys a visual representation of what it looks like when we change the crossovers within the DSP of this amplifier. Now I want to give you guys an audio representation so we can listen to it. Real quick, before we do that, I do want to thank the sponsor of this video, Audio Control, and show you guys a little bit more about the new DMRTA. The DMRTA is designed to be an extremely versatile testing tool for audio. On the device itself, you can see we can connect a microphone. We also have a balanced line input and output, an unbalanced line input and output. We also can connect a digital output along with a USB output and we have a speaker level input. There's a level output control. We can also connect the ACBT24 into the option port here so that we can connect to this device wirelessly with a mobile device. In the software, we have several different tabs. There's a voltage meter. We also have an RTA, which is what I was showing you guys on earlier. And you can see right now, it's actually picking up the audio of my voice talking. They also have an SPL meter. You can also check speaker polarity with the microphone. And there's an oscilloscope function, so if you were playing a sine wave, you can see if there's any distortion in that signal. So as you can imagine, a ton of flexibility for testing the different outputs, for testing the outputs of a factory vehicle system, for tuning your system using the microphone, a ton of different options. I'll be going more into detail on how to use this thing in a future video. Now I wanna give you guys an audio representation of what it sounds like to actually adjust the crossover. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be playing that pink noise that kinda of sounds like static, and I'm gonna to go to my crossover here, and I'm gonna start with taking away the highs. Now let's hear what it sounds like the other way when I start with the highs already there and then bring in the lows. So what other questions do you have about crossovers? Let me know what you guys think. And there's a lot of other smart guys down there that can help you guys out with answering some questions. So along with the launch of the new DMRTA, Audio Control is currently running a promotion on these. If you guys wanna check out details to that, check out the link down in the video description. You can check out some of my other videos here on screen. A special thanks to Audio Control for sponsoring this video and a thank you to Bernard, John, Brian, Ali, Jeremy, Doug, Steve, Emmanuel, and Jerry, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to all those guys for helping make these videos possible. As always, my friends, thank you guys for watching.